We discussed in the first part how to obtain the, uh, the image of a discrete charge. Uh, but the same thing applies for in distribution of charges really. So if you have a, a discrete charge Q as shown here, then its image will be minus Q, the same distance from the, from the ground plane to maintain a zero, zero potential here on the interface, same, maintain the same boundary condition. If you have a linear charge, rho L column per meter, then the image is a linear charge minus L column per meter with, you can see the image of the orientation because if this one is positive, this is a positive charge, it's mapped to a negative charge at the same distance. This here is a negative charge, it's at the same distance as this positive charge, so it will be the image of the orientation. If you have volumetric charge density rho V minus rho V here, then the image of the positive charge density rho V, this is H from the origin, this is, this is H, uh, and of course we have the same uh, material everywhere, epsilon node to remove the ground plane. This solution is valid only in the top part because this is where we maintain the same boundary condition and the same charge distribution. So the lower, the, so the, any field that you get in the lower parts is fictitious. It is simply coming because, because we replaced, we changed the topology of the lower part. We have now new charges and so on. So it has nothing to do with the solution in the lower part of the original problem. Only the top, the top part which is, which you mean, where we maintain the same charges, the same boundary condition is valid. So let's now consider the case of a cylindrical conductor. We have a conductor, um, a wire. It's an infinite wire. It is uh, coming out from the beach. I'm just showing you the cross section. And it's carrying a surface charge density of rho s column per meter squared. So there is surface charge density and it's close to a ground plane. Uh, the, the distance from, uh, from, the, from the center of this conductor to the ground plane is h. And the field, it's assumed that the medium is air. It's required to find uh, the capacitance per unit length. We did some examples on capacitance before. We said there is something called Q method. There is something called V method. Here, what you'll have to do, you have to find the total electric field and then integrate the total electric field from the surface of the conductor uh, to ground in order to be able to find the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the potential difference between the conductor and the ground. But the problem is very complicated. Why is very complicated? Because if you have a post positive charge on the surface, they try to create positive potential on this ground plane. But this ground plane must have zero potential. So what is happening is that the, the this these positive charges will induce negative charges on the surface that will cancel the the effect at every point in the ground plane. And we don't know the distribution of these charges. And you can see the field lines. They will start from the positive charges and they, they will terminate on these negative charges. It's a very complicated problem. We don't know the, 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 the distribution of these charges. We don't know their value and we cannot solve it using a regular mean, the one that we learned earlier. The only way to solve this problem is to convert it to a simpler problem with the same boundary condition and the same charge distribution in the top part, in the top half space. And this is what we'll do. We'll, we'll, I will put an image of this conductor. So we'll put another conductor here, which has a surface charge density of minus rho s and at a distance h as well from the origin. And then we try to get the total field. So this is how the problem looks like after we, uh, we, we did that. We created an image. You can see the image here. It's another conductor. It's also parallel to the original conductor. It carries a surface charge density of minus rho s column per meter squared. It's air everywhere, it's epsilon node, epsilon node. Now this maintains a zero potential here. So for, for the original, for the top half space, it is the same charge distribution and it is the same potential. Now, how to get the field, the total field is the sum of the total fields resulting from both. How to get the total field of a wire? We got before the field of a, of a linear conductor and the field of a wire is very similar. Uh, and what you have to do for the field of a wire is that you have to build a Gaussian surface around it, okay? So it's, 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 it's a circle, it's not a circle, it's a cylinder. And then you uh, assume, because of symmetry, that the electric field will be in the uh, rho direction, so the electric field will be in the rho direction. And uh, solve here for, um, solve for D, and from D get E, and so on. And if you do that, you get, you get actually the same expression of a wire. So uh, the same expression for a wire will be rho L over 2 by epsilon naught rho A rho. Remember, rho is the distance from the center of the wire, in this case, and the A rho is the unit vector pointing outward. 
So it is the same result as a, as a, as a, as a, as a linear charge, but, but this field has to be calculated outside the wire. It cannot be calculated inside the wire, okay, because you assume that your Gauss surface is outside. Now, here we don't have a linear charge. We have a surface charge. Surface charge means how many columns are there per square meters, while here we have a linear, uh, we need a linear charge. But the linear charge is simply is the charge bare in, in on one meter. So the linear charge, by a definition, will be equal to the surface charge multiplied by the area of one meter of this wire, which is equal to two by rho naught multiplied by one. So I multiply the circumference, which is two by rho naught multiplied by one. This will give me the total surface area in one meter of one meter of this wire. When I multiply it by rho s, then I obtain the charge of one meter, which is the surface charge density. So, and this is what you do here. If you replace rho l by this term here, you get this expression. Uh, two by will cancel two by. You get rho naught here, and it's exactly the same expression. It varies as one over rho in the rho direction. But the only difference here is that we have rho s rho naught in the numerator. So now we know that the field resulting from each one of these two wires is equal to rho s rho naught over, uh, over epsilon naught rho a rho. Remember rho naught is a constant, is the radius of the wire. Rho s is given, is a, is a surface charge density. Rho is our variable, rho is the distance from the, from the center. And the o rho is the unit vector. Now in order to calculate the voltage difference between these two conductors, what we'll do, we'll integrate from this point on the, on the surface of the first conductor to this point of the total electric field. The total electric field resulting from this conductor is pointing outward in the rho direction. The total electric field resulting from this one is, is pointing inward because it has negative charge. So these two fields actually have the same sign. Remember that for this one, you should measure the distance from the center. So if this distance is rho, then the expression you use in the field of this one is 2h minus rho. And remember, a rho for this one is opposite a rho for this one. And these two, these two opposite rho, a rho's will cancel each other out with the negative of the charge. So the two fields actually do add, because this one is a positive charge, it's, it gives the field pointing outward, while this one is a negative charge, it gives a field pointing towards the conductor. So they do add up. Now we integrate these two fields, we sum them, we integrate them from, from the boundary of the first conductor to the boundary of the second conductor. So we integrate rho from rho naught to 2h minus rho naught. Remember that this whole distance between the two centers is 2h. So if you integrate, this is here is rho naught, and this one here, this distance from this origin, from this center, is 2h minus rho naught. So we do carry out this integral to get the total potential difference. So the last part is we, we integrate from the positive electrode to the negative electrode, VA minus ZB is this integral of AB E dot DL. This is the expression of the field resulting from the first electrode. This is the expression of the electric field resulting from the second electrode. Two things to notice. Even though rho S here is negative, but A rho of this one is also opposite A rho of this one. And this is why the net result is positive. Okay? The distance from the center of the first wire here is rho. And if the distance from the center of the first wire is rho, then the distance from the center of the second wire is 2h minus rho. And this wire has these two expressions. And here I'm integrating from the center of the first wire to the, to the for, sorry, from the surface of the first wire to the surface of the second wire. Of course, this one here will give us a len, both upper limit minus lower limit, you get 2h minus rho naught over rho naught. This one here, if you put the upper limit, it will give you len rho naught. If you put the lower limit, it will give you uh, len, uh, len uh, 2h minus rho naught, but, but you hear because you, this integral will give you a negative sign with this minus rho, the result of this integral will be identical to the result of this integral. And this is why I multiplied the result here by 2. It's not that difficult to show that. Carry out each one of them separately, you'll see that you give you exactly the same result. So the result, the voltage difference between the two conductors, is uh, two uh, it is it is double uh, the integral coming from this one is two rho s rho naught over epsilon naught len two h minus rho naught over rho. Naught. Remember, rho s is a constant. It is a given charge density. It's coulomb per meter squared. Rho naught is here is the radius of the conductor. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. H is the height of the wire. 
So all these are constants. So this is a number. This is a number. It's not a variable. But this will give us here the voltage difference between the two conductors, while I need the voltage difference between the positive electrode and ground, which is really half, half of this voltage difference. This is why if I want to get the capacitance per unit length, I will divide the charge per unit length by half this voltage, by v, half VA minus VB, because I'm not, I'm not looking for the voltage difference between the conductor and its image but rather between the voltage difference between the conductor and ground. So I divide this number by half. The charge per unit length, as we agreed, it is a surface charge density multiplied by the area of, of one meter, which is two by rho naught by one. If you divide this one by this one here, rho naught will cancel with rho naught, rho s will cancel with rho s, this two will cancel this one half, and the result is 2 by epsilon naught divided over len 2h minus rho naught over rho naught. And this is a capacitance per unit length in farad per meter for, for this, uh, for this uh, conductor, conductor above a ground plane. So you can see the presence of ground planes make a big difference <laughs> because there are, it indeed, there are induced charges are indeed induced in a complex pattern we cannot predict. And the only way to get around that is to solve the, a similar equivalent problem by using image theory. And this is why image theory is very useful. It's used it in analyzing antennas, using it in analyzing microstrip structures, and so on.